This is a photograph which I took the night before I was going to do the first swim across the North Pole. I will never ever forget that feeling inside my stomach when I looked out over that icy terrain, thinking tomorrow I'm going to dive into the Arctic Ocean. Fresh water freezes at zero. The water of the North Pole is minus 1.7. Unbelievably cold, so why? Why on earth would somebody go all the way to the North Pole to go and do a swim? We chose this team based on a number of different things which we felt were important. The first thing that we were looking for was we were looking for people who could honestly put up their hand and say, Lewis, I'm one of the best in the world at what I do. I need the best doctor, the best boat driver, the best of everything. There's no margin for error. The second thing that we were looking for, though, was the complete opposite of that. I hope that nobody in our team would ever have put up their hand and said, you know, Lewis, I'm actually one of the best in the world at what I do. And that is because they're very, very humble. When you get somebody who's really confident on the one hand, but very, very humble on the other hand, where those two meet, you get a special person. And I'm thinking about my mother and thinking, if I kill myself here today, trying to prove this point to world leaders, I leave my mother without her husband and her son. I turn to David Becker and I say, David, I said, for God's sake, if things don't go according to plan, don't let me swim the full kilometer. Pull me out off the 500 meters. He grabs me, he pulls me away from the edge of the ice, and he says to me, Lewis, he said, he said, if you dive into this water, preparing to swim a kilometer, but also thinking about the possibility of getting out after just 500 meters, do you know what you're doing then? I said, what? He said, Lewis, he said, you're going to be confusing the most important part of you, your subconscious, because you are preparing for victory and defeat in your mind at the same time. We learned two really, really important lessons there on Mount Everest. The first one is obvious, and that is that just because something has worked in the past doesn't necessarily mean it's going to work in the future. The second lesson is also one about change, and that is you can change your stroke or you can change your speed, but for real and effective change to take place, one has to be prepared to completely change one's mindset. Every single person in this room has got hopes, has got dreams, has got ambitions, not only for their companies, not only for their teams, but obviously also for themselves. But sometimes the only thing which is stopping us from achieving those hopes and dreams and ambitions is just one thing, and that is fear. We need to continually identify what those limiting beliefs are and keep pushing them away, keep pushing them away, and keep pushing them away. Ladies and gentlemen, it's been a privilege to come and address you here today. I hope the rest of your conference goes very, very well. Thank you all very, very much.